Jim Houston and Buck Martinez for EA Sports Triple Play Baseball. It's Eric from CGR Undertow Studios. Before I get into this review, let me first offer an opinion on how baseball video games should be addressed towards the very fundamental element of pitching. Most people who play baseball video games do not have a history of pitching in the major leagues, so don't you think they deserve a little bit better than not having any idea of where the ball is going to go when you pitched it? Perhaps I'm being nitpicky, but that's the way it is in Triple Play 2000, developed by EA Canada and published by Electronic Arts for the PlayStation, also available for the N64 and Windows. Big ups to Levi in Pittsburgh for this baseball simulator that was undoubtedly the best of its time, which is not saying much when you've been exposed to the present day installments representing our national pastime. Line drive to center field. Triple Play 2000 is pretty basic in its form and function. Let's take a look at pitching first. Now first of all, if you haven't played baseball games up until you come across this one, you'll have to start at rookie if you want to stand a chance against the competition. I mean, just imagine not knowing what to do when Big Mac comes to the plate. You'll hand him a room service fastball that will be blasted out of the park faster than you can say performance enhancing drugs. On rookie mode, pitching is simple and the HUD will tell you exactly what to do. You control pitch direction after you select your pitch, either by pressing X or circle, followed by up, down, left, or right. After that, it's anyone's guess as to how successful your pitch will be, which, as I hinted at before, is a big problem. Why would you leave it a mystery? I think using a baseball cursor inside the strike zone is better than playing a guessing game that involves aiming only in four directions, since pitching is also a matter of painting those corners. Another aspect that might be frustrating at first is fielding. Baseball is a game of reflexes, and if the batter hits a grounder, you have to know what to do in a split second or you'll give up an easy single. Right after your opponent cracks a frozen rope into center field, the big yellow arrows will tell you where to go, but if you can't catch up to the red X and toss it to your second baseman, you'll give up extra bases. When it's time for you to step up to the plate, you'll hit either X to swing normally or square to take that ball for a ride. Personally, I found it frustrating trying to get a base hit in single game mode, so I tried Home Run Derby, one of my favorite modes in any baseball game. This is a good way to practice your hitting skills before you tackle the single game or even season or playoff mode. Technical glitches abound in TP2000 and give it a bad name in the graphics department. The reaction time between the push of a button for your swing is slow, meaning you'll have to swing sooner to catch up to that 95 mile an hour fastball. Players are in typical primitive polygonal form and are fairly static, looking more like a stiff board than an athlete. Frame rates can make gameplay look like a slideshow, and the usually awesome commentary of Jim Hewson and Buck Martinez is fairly limited to phrases like, It's a ball. Whoopee. For its time, Triple Play 2000's gameplay and control gained critical acclaim. Today it shows its age compared to MLB The Show and EA's present day franchise MVP Baseball and even to games that came out before its release, like Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball for the Nintendo 64. Still, it provides you with enough of a challenge to keep on swinging for the fences. It's going, going... That's over 400!